7 News starts with breaking news. Good afternoon, everyone. We begin with breaking news on the coronavirus in Pennsylvania. I'm Peggy Finnegan. Good afternoon. I'm Gordon Lash, Governor Tom Wolf, and Pennsylvania Health Secretary Dr. Rachel Levine are holding a news conference right now. And for the first time, we're hearing about the numbers of cases of multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children here in Pennsylvania. Currently, we are aware of 17 reports of MISC in Pennsylvania. Nine of those are now confirmed. Two have been determined actually not to be a case, and the remaining six are under investigation. The state did not release the locations where those cases are. Pennsylvania's health secretary says the CDC still does not know how it is transmitted. We'll have much more on the state's news conference tonight starting on Channel 11 News at 5. And more breaking news. The Allegheny County Health Department says it has learned of 11 new cases since yesterday at noon, bringing the total to more than 1,800 cases since March 14th. There were no additional deaths reported. And we are seeing a slowdown in new cases statewide. The state health department is reporting 451 new cases since yesterday. Well, a beautiful morning, but it is going to be another very warm day with temperatures nearing 90 degrees. Yeah, it sure is a little bit less humid, though, fortunately. Severe weather team 11 meteorologist Daniel Dozier takes us through the next 24 hours. Danielle. Good afternoon, Gordon. A look over the city and a little bit of haze. You might be able to spot that this afternoon as the temperatures continue to climb from upper 70s and low 80s at this hour into the upper 80s later today. Check out our dew points in the 60s and spots. The higher the number, the more moisture we have in the atmosphere, the more humid it will feel to you. So at this hour, the heat index value is running a little bit higher than the air temperature. Good news is some of the data today coming in showing a slight dip in the dew point number this afternoon and you can see how hot it's going to get upper 80s with a forecast high of 88 degrees I'll let you know when rain is moving back with the forecast coming up in minutes thanks Danielle eventually all the counties will move into the green phase but there's no timeline for that there is a task force that's looking at ways to make Pittsburgh safer. A committee recently released a lengthy report, a report with ideas on changes that can be made to help businesses while cutting down their risks. Channel 11's Liz Kilmer takes us through that report. It took just 10 days to develop the nearly 60 page report, which includes a number of recommendations for the city's Department of Mobility and Infrastructure, proposing ways to help businesses and community members to get through the pandemic. As we adjust to our new normal, a big focus is helping businesses survive while keeping people safe. It's why the city of Pittsburgh formed an advisory committee to come up with ways to do just that using streets and mobility services. The committee, comprised of business owners, urban designers and others, convened four times and came up with a number of recommendations. Among them, expand sidewalk space at busy bus stops, promote use of bikes and bike share, and help businesses by improving curbside management for pickup and delivery by expanding sidewalks for lines and seating. The committee chairman stating that the Department of Mobility must, quote, continue to seek, really listen to, and utilize continued input from the diversity of neighborhoods and communities in the city. No one size or one approach will suit all places, contexts, and needs. And in response to receiving this report, the department has taken action in a number of ways. I'll break that down coming up tonight at 5. Back to you. People who work at the Beaver County Courthouse will now have their temperature checked before entering the office. It comes after an employee tested positive for the virus. Over the last 10 days, that sick employee was in the building for just four hours, but officials are taking every precaution. They're reviewing surveillance video to see who may have come into contact with the worker. The courthouse will remain open, but officials say if you're sick, don't put others at risk and stay home. The FBI is warning about a new threat. We've told you about Zoom bombings before. That's when someone hacks into a virtual meeting. Now we're learning the hacks can come with some disturbing images. Channel 11's Mike Holden walks us through what you can do to protect yourself and your family. 
The FBI right here in Pittsburgh is cracking down on cyber crimes, in particular those conference chats where someone comes in, interrupts it, and typically shows explicit photos. They want you to come forward and report this if it's happened to you, and they say that is crucial in putting an end to it immediately. The FBI reports they have covered nearly 200 cases across the United States of people on Zoom being interrupted by someone showing images of child sexual abuse. Four have happened right here in the Pittsburgh area. The FBI says they consider this to be a violent crime. They say every time a child is shown, that child becomes a victim yet again, and you too become a victim by having to witness the disturbing images. Investigators are now working to trace the images to whoever is responsible and charge that person. In the meantime, we have broken down the best steps to take so this does not happen to you. First, don't make video conference meetings public. Require a password. Use the waiting room feature to control the guests and finally only provide the meeting link directly to interested parties. The FBI says we all have to be vigilant. We are investigating this. We are going to continue until they are identified and until they are caught and that the penalty they are facing is distribution of child pornography. Now the FBI is stressing this afternoon that if you are using Zoom or Skype to make sure you record those chats, that could be crucial in actually having evidence to turn into them. Starting at 5 o'clock on Channel 11 News at 5, we're diving deeper into this story and taking a closer look at the ways we can better protect ourselves from falling victim. That's all starting at 5. Reporting from the South Side, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. A food distribution event is just getting underway for veterans and their families. That's at the Veterans Leadership Program on Smallman Street in the Strip District. Non-perishable items as well as fresh produce will be handed out, and that's going to run until the food is gone. This is the fifth military food distribution since the start of the outbreak. The event is made possible with the help of the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank. Massive pool party at a bar in Missouri got a whole lot of attention this Memorial Day weekend. And this afternoon, we're learning that everyone's temperature was checked before they could enter. However, critics say the lack of social distancing is still concerning. Coronavirus, is, uh, coronavirus cases excuse me, are on the rise in the southern hemisphere. Starting at midnight tonight, the U.S. is closing its doors to travelers from Brazil which now has more cases than any country in the world except the U.S. NBC's Tracy Potts has the new mornings from health officials. The World Health Organization is urging countries to remain on high alert. The disease can jump up at any time. Warning that we could see a second peak in this first wave of coronavirus cases. We cannot make assumptions that just because the disease is on the way down now that it's, on a, it's, on, it's going to keep going down. Arkansas is seeing that second spike now. It's fairly modest compared to where we are in a lot of other hot spots. More states lift restrictions today with protests urging a faster reopening. Your dog can get groomed, but you can't get a haircut? I need my hair done. That's a problem. This is ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> Period. Montgomery, Alabama's mayor fears his state is moving too fast. We've had a 80% of our deaths have taken place uh, just in this month alone. Trading at the New York Stock Exchange resumes today for the first time in two months. Together, we will vanquish the virus and America will rise from this crisis. President Trump is moving the ban on travel from Brazil from Thursday to tonight. Almost a thousand people are dying there every day. To put that in perspective, in the United States, we have more than 1.6 million coronavirus cases. That's more than four times the number they have in Brazil. Tracy Potts, NBC News. Meanwhile, Pennsylvania says that it's developed an enhanced testing plan. State officials say it's a top priority to test everyone who has symptoms. And they're focused on test availability and moving testing locations to hot spots as they develop. Next week, things are going to look a little different on Port Authority buses. Starting Monday, riders can once again get on the bus using the front door. And on June 8th, regular fare collection will also resume. But the Port Authority says it will continue to install plexiglass shields as a barrier between drivers and passengers. 
Crews battled a house fire in Richland Township this morning. That fire was sparked just before 4 at a home on Westland Drive. Firefighters were able to quickly get those flames under control, and everyone living there made it out okay. Police are looking for the person who shot two people in Clareton late last night, and one of the victims is a 16-year-old girl. Police say a man was also shot on Wiley Avenue. We saw a lot of evidence of the shooting, including a shattered back window. There were nearly a dozen evidence markers. The girl was shot in the ankle. The man was shot in a thigh. State police say this college senior is at the center of a multi-state manhunt. The picture was taken on a railroad track in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. It's the last known location for Peter Manafrandonia. He's been accused of killing two men in Connecticut last week, then taking off to New Jersey, then Pennsylvania. If you do see him, state police say don't approach him and call 911. State troopers have been assigned to the manhunt, and they are working with the FBI. I hope they do. They have to get him. They have to catch him. He can't get away with this. Manfredonia is considered armed and extremely dangerous, so just call 911 if you think you may have seen him. I want her to be remembered as the caring, loving, funny person that she was. Two sisters grieving after their mother died from the coronavirus at Brighton Rehab. What they say the biggest problems are inside the local nursing home. First, it was shut down by coronavirus. Now it's open, but with social distancing rules. But that's not the worst of it. The project a local business says has them facing the end. The governor has given the go-ahead for public pools to reopen, but it could take weeks. The changes that have to be made before you can take a dip in your community pool. Nobody can read between the lies. She's an 18-year-old girl. She got a settlement. You saw a little money. You wanted a big red truck. Like Judge Judy. Shiny, shiny, shiny red truck. <laughs> Judge Judy. Weekdays at 4 and 4.30 on Channel 11. You're streaming WPXI now, your source for original local shows. Get the inside scoop on all the hot events, entertainment, and celebrities in and around Pittsburgh every week. Stream Access Pittsburgh on demand anytime on WPXI now. Make sure you know everything happening in the morning. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. An ongoing construction project delayed by COVID-19 is hurting business in Ohio Pile. The owner of Falls Market says she had to put her store up for sale. 
The store is allowed to be back open, but a PennDOT project on Route 381 will completely shut down the road in front of her store. It takes a lot to run a small business, and it's really hard when you feel like you keep getting kicked when you're down. She says her only hope now is that PennDOT and Plum Construction finish the project sooner than the estimated July 3rd completion date. The Pennsylvania Turnpike is out $120 million because of the pandemic. Traffic is down about 50% since March. That's about 20 million fewer vehicles. They say commercial traffic has remained steady, but it's still lower. To offset the loss, they've now started a hiring freeze for management and union jobs. On a day like today, everyone wants to know when they'll be allowed to take a dip in their neighborhood pool. The governor recently allowed pools to reopen in yellow phase counties, and that includes the Cranberry Water Park. Channel 11's Jillian Hartman shows us how long it could take to reopen. Well, families have been cooped up inside for weeks, and now that we have some nice weather and the governor has allowed public pools to reopen, it's only natural that kids want to get out and swim. We've been getting cabin fever. Just like many kids, these twins are looking forward to the day pools open this summer. We miss it a lot. It's yeah. going to be 90 degrees this week. Perfect timing for the entire state to get the go-ahead from the governor to open public pools in the yellow phase. Yeah. Kids well, in the area yeah, are obviously the excited. We love the pool. It's really refreshing. Especially on hot summer days. Especially like this. Like this. But unfortunately, kids will have to wait a little longer because officials tell me it's going to take weeks to get public pools ready for families. We're all trying to be on the same page uh, as we discuss how and what opening will look like. There is so much that already goes into getting a public pool ready, and now municipalities statewide are facing a lot of challenges, trying to come up with the best methods to open safely. You know, just like everything else, nothing is concrete in how to manage it or how to do it. Cranberry Township is drawing up a plan to reopen its water park. They are already training staff and lifeguards with the safety guidelines put in place so far. And we're also waiting some guidance on CDC for how we can best protect everybody that's coming in the facility. Um, how often do we need to sanitize? How often do we need to remind people? How many chairs should we put out? I'm told families will likely have to bring their own chairs to the pool. They also may notice social distancing markers and signs around the pool reminding people to stay six feet apart. A big challenge will be limiting crowds. So officials decided to only allow Cranberry Township residents and water park members at the pool. We want to try and make sure that we're serving the people that we need to first. However, members and residents are able to bring guests. Now, officials say there are still a lot of questions on how to open pools this summer. But one thing is for certain, they are following every guideline and procedure to keep staff and families safe. Now, the target date to open the Cranberry Water Park here is July 1st, but the township made it very clear that they're trying their best to open the pool, but it's not a guarantee that it will open this summer. Reporting in Cranberry Township, I'm Jillian Hartman, Channel 11 News. Parents can now bring their kids to the Butler County Family YMCA. According to Butler Radio, the child care programs reopened this morning and Butler and South Butler day camps will start up on June 8th. There are new procedures in place there to keep everyone safe. Breast imaging centers have also started mammograms again, but fewer patients apparently are willing to go during the pandemic. Early numbers show one-third of all patients who need a mammogram are refusing to schedule their appointments because of concerns of catching COVID-19 at the doctor's office. Obviously, this whole COVID crisis has been really scary for everyone, and a lot of people have been holed up in their houses for all of this time. So it can be very scary to leave your house for any reason. But rest assured, here, we've put a whole team together to figure out what is the best way to image people safely. New safety procedures are in place. Temperature checks are being done on everyone. Exam rooms, including dressing rooms and lockers, are being disinfected nonstop. And appointments are also being spread out to limit the amount of patients coming in at one time. 
It's going to be toasty once again today, and in fact, hotter than what we had out there yesterday, which was highs in the middle 80s. We're looking at a forecast high of 88 degrees with plenty of sunshine. Now, if you're out and about today and you're looking up at the sky, you may see a few fair weather cumulus clouds developing with the heating of the day, but that's about it. We're going to have a southeasterly wind, and it may peak as high as nearly 15 miles per hour, but overall, not too bad. In fact, I'd like it to be a little bit more breezy to help cool us off a little bit. You'll definitely need your AC working today. Here's a look at our forecast this evening. If you need to mow your lawn, you're going to need to have the water on hand. The temperatures are still forecast in the upper 80s through 6 and 7 o'clock. 84 degrees at 8 o'clock here tonight. Overnight tonight, we're looking at temperatures once again falling right back down into the low to middle 60s. And of course, that's no surprise when your high temperatures are in the upper 80s. So we definitely have more of a summer feel to the air out there today. Tonight, mostly clear. We'll have a light southeasterly wind. Now, the model data does show a little more cloud cover building in into our Wednesday morning. So that's what you're seeing here on the icons. 65 at 6 o'clock, 68 degrees is expected at 8 a.m. So mild start to the day. Tomorrow is still going to be a very warm day and well above average. Average is lower 70s for highs this time of year. And you can see our swimming forecast that kid is having a great time, isn't he? 81 degrees at 2 o'clock, 85 degrees at 6 p.m. So, of course, you're going to need that sunscreen out there if you're spending any extended period of time heading to the pool, doing a very long walk. You can see our summer heat will continue at least for today and tomorrow. And it's really going to be warm through the extended period as well until we get into the weekend. Wait until you see that forecast and big changes are on the way. In the meantime, take a look at our forecast for tomorrow, about 84. For Beaver, near 80 in Greensburg, could be a couple of ticks higher there on the thermometer. 85 for Pittsburgh, 82 degrees in Washington. So while we're backing off just a little bit on the temperature, it's definitely still above average. You can see our storm tracker maps as we head into Thursday. I think that's going to be our next opportunity for rain across a good part of the area. And we've been saying this pretty much all week long and into last weekend. We were letting you know that Thursday and Friday we're going to be bringing in that better shot at rain. We're going to have some showers lifting north across the area as we head into Thursday morning. That's 530. And some brief heavy downpours are expected. That's 730 in the morning. Quite a bit of moderate to heavy rain showing up there in Washington and Washington County. So this is going to be our next opportunity for rain and when you'll need your umbrella, I think, next across the area. A couple of thunderstorms are possible by Thursday afternoon. Scattered showers and storms still in the forecast for Friday. We're toning down the high temperatures for later in the week, going with 81 on Friday. Weekend is always in view, and we are looking at some much cooler air. Stick with me. We'll talk 90-degree stats in your UV index coming up in the next half hour. The gate of a local basketball court locked again. Why the mayor ordered it shut down right after he decided to open it. Another bear sighting up close and personal. The local neighborhood where that bear is roaming and it's getting downright uncomfortable. Say Channel 11 News, 11 at 11 all the time. But this is what it means. It means you get 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. It means we deliver breaking news, local news happening now, and details about what's happened since 6. All before the first commercial. 11 at 11 means I'll track storms and bring you your first look at weather before the first commercial. Channel 11 News, 11 at 11. 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. Watch tonight.
When you want news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. It's just unfortunate that, you know, some people basically ruined it for a few of our residents that use the facilities. Basketball courts in South Greensburg are closed once again after a group of 40 people showed up and they were not social distancing. Yeah, the mayor told Channel 11's Melanie Gillespie it was a decision he wishes he didn't have to make. The gates remain locked up here in South Greensburg Municipal Park. All recreational facilities were shut down in March to go along with the governor's orders. But since moving into the yellow phase, borough leaders were trying to give some residents some leeway. It's just unfortunate that, you know, some people basically ruined it for a few of our residents that use the facilities uh, and that would practice social distancing. The mayor thought opening up the basketball courts would be a good outlet for the kids and their parents in town until last weekend. There was 40 plus people on the basketball courts, nobody practicing social distancing. Um, and technically, I think under the governor's orders, uh, it probably wasn't the best idea to open up the courts. Uh, so I made a decision on Monday morning to, uh, to close the basketball courts again until uh, further notice. The courts in the playground are still closed, but the tennis courts and park remain open with social distancing guidelines in place. The mayor says he's hoping the green phase will bring things back to normal, but right now they have to comply with what the state tells them. People won't police themselves if you don't police them, and that's the situation we were into, and that's the decision that I made to lock them back up, and that's what we're going to stick with until we get to the green phase and reevaluate. Melanie Gillespie, Channel 11 News. They came to Pittsburgh to get an education, but now they're stuck. The struggles international students face as they work to get home. Brighton Rehab has the worst coronavirus outbreak of any nursing home in the state. How these sisters hope to shift the focus to the patients. Every candidate, every voice, every vote matters. From the campaign trail to your backyard, we're talking to the candidates about the big issues and to the voters who will decide the election. Channel 11 News, Decision 2020 coverage you can count on.
Channel 11 Morning News is committed to covering the reopening of our area. Here are a few things that you can do starting today. Bringing you what's next with experts weighing in. Just a few days ago, we asked people how they felt about entering the yellow phase. Count on Channel 11 News every morning. Severe weather coverage where you live. On Channel 11 News. Another very warm days uh, day, excuse me, with temperatures nearing 90 degrees. Yeah, but we're getting a little break from the humidity. Severe Weather Team 11 meteorologist Danielle Dozier takes us through her forecast. Danielle. Good afternoon, Gordon. In western Pennsylvania, look over the city. We've got a mostly sunny sky. We're going to be sweating out there once again. This is our UV index forecast. It is a 9. Burn time is 15 minutes. And you can see everything that you're going to need. Of course, the sunscreen, light colored clothing. You're going to check on your pets, the elderly, your kids as well throughout the day because it's just going to be incredibly hot, well above average and in the upper 80s. You can see you're doing a little grilling this evening. That temperature is still in the upper 80s through 5 and 6 o'clock. I think we'll reach that forecast high near 88 degrees. We're toning down the temperatures a little bit for Wednesday. I've got a fresh look at that forecast and our next best chance for widespread rain coming up in minutes. The state health department is reporting 451 new coronavirus cases since yesterday. That may sound like a lot, but we had been seeing more than a thousand cases a day, just to put things into perspective. And locally, we are seeing fewer cases. We mentioned 11 new cases since yesterday in Allegheny County. The health department learned of two new cases in Beaver County and just one in Fayette County and Westmoreland County. And no new cases at all in Butler or Washington counties. They do have good workers over there, but they need help so desperately. Their mother died from the coronavirus inside Brighton Rehab. That nursing home has the most deaths of any facility in the state of Pennsylvania. Channel 11's Amy Marcinkowitz talked with the family, hoping to bring a name and a face to the pandemic. These sisters are missing their mom. She died a week ago Friday inside Brighton Rehab. They reached out to us because they want you to know their mom is more than just a COVID case. I just want people to know what a wonderful person she was. A casualty to COVID at just 70 years old, Nancy Kimmer, who was living with dementia, is one of more than 5,000 people in Pennsylvania who have died from the virus. Nancy lived here at Brighton Rehab where more than 75 patients died. She lived on a ground floor where her daughters had windows access. They say they watched their mom decline quickly. There's so many families that haven't seen their loved ones in months and they have no idea what's going on in there. Helpless on the outside, feeling for the other patients and staff on the inside. You put that amount of pressure you know, in a pandemic, I mean, that's not enough employees for a healthy floor. The sisters say the things that went on inside too many to list, telling me they blame management for the little to no communication as their mom was dying. These men and women that are caring for these patients, they're exhausted, they're, em they're emotionally drained, and they're doing the absolute best that they can. And it's just unfortunate that the management um, they really dropped the ball. Brighton Rehab, the largest COVID outbreak in the state. The National Guard called in to help, and they did. Cases are down, but it's too late for Nancy Kimmer. These women lost a mom, a grandma, with a sense of humor, always pulling pranks. That's who their daughters want you to see, not the virus. I encourage other family members, you know, to put your family members and loved ones face out there so they're not just a number. Nancy's daughters are part of a class action lawsuit alleging improper inspections inside nursing homes. Amy Marcinkowitz, Channel 11 News. All Eaton Park locations are now open for takeout, and that includes Hello Bistro and The Porch. All restaurants will be open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. for takeout only, and you can get a boost for breakfast. Eaton Park will also be giving out free coffee from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. through Monday. It's been challenging. The first one is the psychological trauma that we go through. You don't have anybody to talk with. You don't have anybody to share ideas with. University students in the Pittsburgh area feel stranded, and it's all because of the pandemic. Our Michelle Newell is highlighting the challenges a group of 25 students are facing from paying rent to buying food, and home is thousands of miles away. You don't know what's going to happen, a whole lot of uncertainty. Yeah, 
It's not a good feeling. I'm right out of money. The COVID-19 pandemic is impacting a number of international students. I know colleagues of mine as such who haven't been able to pay their rent, and it's a big challenge on them. Eric Brown is struggling to pay rent, too. He's a graduate student at Duquesne University. He says a private loan to fund his education was cut, but he says he has received some help from the university with food, rent, and counseling. It's been challenging. The first one is the psychological trauma that we go through. Brown's family lives in Ghana, but he says he can't get there due to COVID-19 travel restrictions. This is an example of what's being done to help get food to students like Brown. About 25 students were given food at this food drive for international students and others in the community. Imagine they tell you the money is cut. You can't go home. So you find yourself that you don't even know who to ask. It was put on by Africa Yetu Incorporated, an organization that is doing a lot to help students right now. A number of other organizations are trying to help too. I have about 23 on my list and they're from schools all over. What is their hope for the next semester? What are the colleges going to do? How can they be assisted? I'm Michelle Newell for Channel 11 News. Thinking, you might say, outside the gym. Breaking News Desk is really an invaluable tool. You're going to get breaking news as it's happening. You can be assured that everything I tell you is something that's important that's going to impact your day. We have an anchor now dedicated to following the latest information as it comes in. I know the neighborhoods. I know the school districts. And that really helps to inform you so that you know if something is going to impact your family. As soon as she gets that information, the Breaking News Desk is able to go on air, bring that information to you and share it. That is a resource no one else has. If you see me on the Breaking News Desk, you know it's an important story. Channel 11 News, 11 at 11. 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. Gyms are not allowed to open just yet, but the owner of Pure Bar in Wexford got permission to hold outdoor classes in the parking lot. It's something the owner says she's been anxious to do for months. It just feels good to be outside in this beautiful weather on Memorial Day and to be with our Pure Bar family and doing what we do best and doing it together. Eight, nine, and ten. The owner says the business and its members both benefit when classes are held in person. 
Coronavirus scams aren't slowing down. More than 52,000 Americans have already filed complaints with the Federal Trade Commission over fraud. They have reported nearly $39 million in losses. Experts say you should never give credit card or personal information to anyone over the phone and don't click on unknown links and emails. Staying at home with no place to go. The surprising effect the coronavirus lockdown may have had on your wallet. Channel 11 covers weather everywhere you live. And we have the experience to get it right. We know the unique weather patterns across our neighborhoods. It's why it can be raining in Beaver County. While it's dry in Westmoreland County. Weather coverage you can count on. During this time of crisis, Pittsburghers always come together. And that's why we're here to try to take that burden off of the families and to be able to provide them food for themselves and their kids every day. Channel 11 salutes the helpers. Pittsburgh's chief meteorologist, Stephen Cropper, tracking the weather in your neighborhood. There's a somewhat surprising effect that the coronavirus lockdown is having on many Americans. And some businesses couldn't be happier. Channel 11's Jennifer Tomazic explains why. Lockdown staying at home has unlocked the grip some people had on their spending habits. Surprisingly, about 60 million Americans are actually spending more money during this time of social distancing than prior to it. Jill Gonzalez at Wallet Hub says their recent survey found a sizable chunk of the country buying stuff, spending money to relieve stress. 43% of Americans are participating in what's called comfort buying. Buying not just what's needed, but what they want. Oh, we did buy a hot tub. Actually, first the first week of this, uh, we bought a, a hot tub off Amazon. I would say that it's, it's somewhat comforting to buy these things because I feel like it's in a, in a way it's like therapy. Therapy that can break the boredom of a lockdown. Now about 30% of us are spending the most on entertainment. So that's your Netflix, your Hulu, subscriptions to keep you occupied all day while we are at home. Second on the list of non-essential spending is a soothing or stiff drink. Probably spending more on alcohol at stores. I won't lie about that. 25% of those surveyed admit that they are spending more on alcohol, while nearly half say they've found stress relief by adopting or fostering a pet. Jennifer Tomazic, Channel of the News. Check this out, this black bear roaming a neighborhood in Cranberry Township. The bear made himself at home inside a fenced-in yard on Robin Hood Drive. The family there was out of town, but others were barbecuing in the neighborhood. Pretty good size. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. neat. It's neat to see. He was trying to get him to go over to get food. 
How then, was he? Yeah. And then he climbed on that tree. Certainly got a lot of attention in that neighborhood. The Game Commission says black bears are always looking for food. The commission says they're not dangerous unless they feel threatened. Looking at our forecast for the rest of the day today, those temperatures will be climbing into the upper 80s. We're going to have a mostly sunny sky and a southeast breeze at 5 to 15 miles per hour in tonight. 84 at 7 o'clock. 11 o'clock is still at 74 degrees. You know it's going to be a mild one when the temperatures are that warm outside. We're looking at temperatures in the morning in the mid-60s. Check it out. Here's some of our 90-degree day stats. If Pittsburgh reaches the 90s today, it would be the earliest since May 19th of 1996. And we've been tracking these stats for you. The last 90-degree or better day in May was May 29th of 2018. It actually reached the 90s three times last year, officially in the Pittsburgh area, but it took a little bit longer. Longer. Tonight's going to be a, a mild one for us, as I mentioned, with lows down in the 60s. So here's your area-wide forecast. 64 in Beaver, 62 in Butler, and 62 degrees out in Indiana. Here's our morning planner. While we're going to be mostly clear during much of the overnight, some of our latest data has been showing just a little bit of cloud cover for the morning on Wednesday. The temperatures, though, mid-60s through 6, 7, and 8 o'clock in the morning, and we'll break out some sunshine throughout the rest of the afternoon. In fact, here's a look at the planner hour by hour for tomorrow, 77 at noon. We'll climb to near 85 degrees at 5 o'clock. And while you're looking at this thing, and while it's not going to be as hot as it is out there today, you're right. Today's is going to be the warmest of the extended forecast. This is still well above average. Average is low 70s for this time of year and definitely more of a summer feel. It's been lately for us, hasn't it? And uh, again, June 1st marking meteorological summer. So it's, it's right around the corner. And you might be thinking, what's meteorological summer? Well, that's what we use for climate record purposes the months of june july and august of course astronomical summer actually begins uh, later on in the month of june here's our high temperatures 80 in indiana 84 in beaver 82 degrees in washington tomorrow go about your outdoor plans wednesday is also looking like a great day to get some fresh air and get outside of course take your heat precautions because you'll need to our next chance for widespread rain across the area will be coming in as we head into thursday morning got some moisture coming in from the south so we could be tracking some bouts of more moderate to heavy rain by Thursday morning you can see that they're showing up in Washington and as we head into Thursday afternoon there will be a chance for thunderstorms with the chance for more storms coming in for Thursday and especially Friday of this week you can always download our severe weather team 11 app and that's free and that'll keep you up to date with the latest forecast and the radar right at your fingertips here's a check of the five-day forecast we're backing down the highs a little bit as we head into the end of the week and your weekend is always in view. Look at that. A lot cooler. 72 Saturday, 47 Saturday night, upper 60s, close to 70 degrees as we head into Sunday. And the good news about it as well is we're really going to be lowering that humidity. NBC's America's Got Talent returns tonight for a new season, and like just about everything else, it too has been impacted by the coronavirus. It started as a normal season of America's Got Talent, AGT, when production began three months ago, but only nine days into auditions, COVID-19 took hold, two days of filming without an audience, then a complete shutdown. And they had to finish the auditions virtually. Channel 11 spoke one on one with Simon Cowell about going virtual. I like doing these auditions, preferably with an audience, so you gauge the audience reaction. I like to meet the people, I like to spend some time talking to them before they audition. For the next two months, though, it is the AGT audiences that we know and love. And AGT premieres tonight at 8 here on Channel 11. Then stick around for 11 at 11. The NHL is ready to get back to business. They plan the plan now in place for safe workouts. First, here's Lisa Robertson with today's Steals and Deals. I'm Lisa Robertson here with Local Steals and Deals to show you one of the coolest ideas that we've had for you so far. How many times do you realize, oh my gosh, I'm gonna go to the gym, I better take my wedding ring off. I'm gonna go to work if you're a doctor or a nurse or you're in the military or you work in law enforcement or you're a chef, whatever it happens to be, there's so many people who don't wear their wedding bands to work because what they do is not conducive to a traditional hard metal band, right? This is the Kalo. 
So Kalo is a new concept and it's one of the coolest things going. It's a silicone ring and they have them for men, they have them for women, they have stack rings, they have wedding bands, different colors, different sizes, customizable. But now you have something that's comfortable. It's never going to be a problem. You're never going to have to worry about it. And when you go to the gym and work out, you don't have to leave your band in the locker. Now you can have your Kalo on, you're good to go. If you're cleaning around the house, you don't have to take your wedding band off. You put on your Kalo, you're good to go. I love, by the way, kind of an interesting one, I like this one. It kind of has a really cool iron texture, and I would wear that one even though I think it's more for the guys, but I think it's super cool. These are one of the hottest things going in the world of celebrities as well. You might have noticed LeBron James wearing one, a lot of celebrity chefs wearing them. These are people who do jobs. It's their job to play basketball and to make great things in the kitchen and create masterpieces where they can't wear a regular wedding band they're wearing the Kalo. So I love the fact that we have a lot of options. We even have customizable options, by the way. You can get one for you and a matching one for your husband. If you know anyone having a baby, get them one. They're gonna love it when they have the baby because they can't wear a regular wedding ring. So many people are going to love the Kalo. So they're all on localsteels.com, 30% off, lots of great options. And it's just one of the great offers that we have for you. Definitely check it out. I like people to be honest, not stupid. Nobody brings the truth to life. Is that what you want me to believe? Nobody can read between the lies. I'm 5'9", and I have a body like Christy Brinkley. Do you believe that? Like Judge Judy. She's an 18-year-old girl. She got a settlement. You saw a little money. You wanted a big red truck. Shiny, shiny, shiny red truck. <laughs> I still love this job. Judge Judy, weekdays at 4 and 4.30 on Channel 11. Watch Channel 11 News at 6. Followed by NBC Nightly News at 6.30. As cabin fever starts to set in, summer travelers are looking into the options. Airbnb says that cabins are the second most searched listing right now in the U.S. Last year, cabins were number six on the list, and more people are also unplugging to enjoy the wonders of nature, according to the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, hunting and fishing licenses are also seeing a boost. The NHL has announced their framework for phase two of the return to play protocol. Phase two involves the opening of practice facilities and small group workouts. Six players will be allowed in a practice facility at once and on the ice sessions will be players only. Coaches or other personnel are not allowed. Masks are required at all times except when players are on the ice or exercising. Player participation is also voluntary. 
everybody's missing their sports. That's all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast comes up tonight at 5 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. slowed down, hunkered down to keep our distance and the weather's helping to hold it together. It's getting